All right, so we are in trig. We are in trig 2.2 graphs of equations with two variables. So let's get it a look. So example one, just simply graphing this. Um, this is the y-intercept graphing 2x minus 1, right? That's the y-intercept. So that means um, we're going to go down negative 1 on the y and plot ourselves a point. And for some reason, I went down uh, negative 2 here, so hold on one sec. Okay, there we go. Um, so plot at negative 1. And then this right here is the w slope. And that's a change in y or a change in x. It means up and down. So up and down and then left and right. So that slope is 2 over 1, which means I go from this point up 2 over 1 and put a point. Up 2 more over 1, put a point. Up 2 more over 1, put a point. And connect it with a line. And there is your line of y equals 2x minus 1. Parabolas, they are U-shaped graphs. That's what parabolas are. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's what parabolas are. Morning, star shine. The Earth says hello. So the vertex point, that's the lowest point on the graph. All right, it could be the highest point in the graph as well, but the vertex is like the bottom or the top of your parabola. Okay, so keep that in mind. Hi -ho. The x-intercept, that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, it's where it crosses the x-axis. The, the y-intercept, that's where the graph crosses the y-axis at. That's where it crosses the y-axis. So, taking a look here to graph this parabola, find the x and y intercepts first. So, the to find the x intercept, you make y equal 0. So, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make y equal 0, and to find the y intercept, you make x equal 0. So, find the, y, the x intercept and make y equal 0. So, I solve this by adding 3 to both sides. So, I get 3 equals square root of 2. And when you divide them, you get plus or minus, because whenever you square root something, you get plus or minus. So you get plus or minus the square root of 3, which is roughly negative 1.73 and positive 1.73. So I go over negative 1.73 and put a point there. I go over 1.73 and put a point there. So there are my points. To find the y-intercept, I make x equals 0. So when that's 0, that cancels out y is negative 3, so that means I go down 1, 2, 3, and put a point. And there is my parabola. x squared minus 3. Example 3, uh, we already did this problem. It was uh, to graph example 2, which we just did, so it's no big deal. However, if you forgot the x-intercept, it was negative 1.73 and 1.73. And the y-intercept was 0, negative 3. So just in case you didn't write them down. 19. So I want you to use your calculator now to find the x and y-intercept for x squared minus 3. And here's how you do it to graph it using a graphing calculator. Um, what we're going to do is press second trace, which is calc and press 2. Okay, so second trace, but before you do that, um, we want to make sure you have it. So to graph it, go y equals, press your x, t, theta, n button, and then squared, which is right above the log, minus 3, and press graph and it's graphed there for you. So what we're saying is to find the x and y intercepts of the graph, now you press second and trace and then go down to two and that's zeros. Um, find the left and right bound. Um, press enter each time. So it says, hey, find the left bound. So what that means is you know it's crossing um, the x um, axis. You can see where it's crossing the x axis. So left bound in this problem means go to the left of where you think it's crossing and press enter. 
Then it says right bound on your calculator. Go a little below where it's crossing and press enter. Then it says guess. And if you notice, it comes up with a negative 1.73. Uh, it asks you to guess, press enter one more time, and you get negative 1.73. Um, to do it again, press second trace, go down to zero again. Now this time, try doing it again. Uh, but the left bound where it crosses the x-axis is not going to be below it, because it's below where that point is, so press enter below it. And then right bound above it, and when you guess it should be 1.73 and press second trace one more time and go down to zero and we're going to see if we can figure out where it crosses the y so you can see about where it crosses so make a rough guess I'm going to say it crosses um, on the left hand side of it and the right hand side of it press guess again and we'll find out where um, to get that at. symmetry of graphs so we're going to take a look at right now so symmetry of graphs so number one Okay, this gave you a little rough little graph. This symmetry means it flips right over the um, y-axis. So how do you do that? What all you're doing is, is notice the x value is what changed. The y values didn't. The x value, you just make negative to flip it over there. So this is symmetry over that x-axis. Basically just make x negative. And then this one over here, symmetry like this, symmetry over the y, making y negative. And this one is symmetry over the origin. And that's basically, you make both x and y negative. So if you flip it over this way, you just make the x negative. Flip it over this way, you make the y negative. Flip it over like this and you're making both of them negative. How, uh, how you doing? So sketch the graph that. So the sketch that we need to solve for y. So I'm going to square root both sides and we get plus or minus the square root of x. So to graph root x and then we need to graph negative root x. This is going to take some points and plug them in. Okay, so if I took 0 and plugged it in, I'll get 0. The reason why I chose 4 next is because the square root of 4 is a nice even number. It's 2. And the square root of 9 I chose because 9 is 3. Over here, I chose 0 again. I chose 4 again because square root of 4 is 2, so it's a negative 2. I chose 9 because the square root of 9 is 3, which is a negative 3. And when I plot them quick, there's 0, 0. Um, one's 4, 2. The other one's 4, negative 2. The other one's 9, 3. And the other one is 9, negative 3. And there is my graph. So when we come back, we will continue example 6.